So we pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this hour. Speak through my mouth, Lord, and bless all of us. Let your name, Lord, be glorified. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 10, give me verse 17. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. It says, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Another way to put it is to say, faith coming by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. That is repeatedly hearing. You build up your faith. Praise the Lord. I was meditating on what should I exhort today. And the Lord said, the message he gave to me to preach I said, well, I'll preach that several times. He said, preach it again. I said, preach coming by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. Praise the Lord. John chapter 8, verse 51. Gospel of John chapter 8, verse 51. He said, faith coming by hearing and hearing. Keep on hearing it. And that's how the faith comes and you get established in the faith. If you go through this chapter of John chapter 8, you will see the debate that was going on between the Lord Jesus Christ and the, and the Jews. And he came to this point, he threw this one in. Look like he just draw it out and throw it in because it doesn't look like it flows with what they were debating, what they were talking about. But he wanted to tell them who he is. So he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. They already told him right to his face in the earlier verses and said, you are a Samaritan and you have a devil. I mean, they were telling the religious guys, they were accusing him that he has a devil. That was the Jews that don't, didn't believe. He said, I don't have a devil. He said, but I am not my father, and you do so know me. Then he told this one in that if a man keep my saying, he shall never see that. And they said, aha, now we know you have a devil. Verse 52. Then said the Jews unto him, now we know that thou art a devil. Abraham is dead. And the prophets. And thou says, if a man keep my saying, he shall never taste of death. Verse 23. Are thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead. Who makest thou thyself? Who makest thou thyself? And the Lord Jesus Christ did not reverse what he said, verse 54. See, if I not honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. So what was he trying to tell him? If a man, now he said a man, it's not individual. There is what we call general benefits. General benefits. There is what we call privilege. Let me give you an analogy. I presented it like this in some radio broadcast. In the world right now, if you are a citizen of America, you, and you are born in this country, you go to grade school free of charge. You go to high school free of charge. Not so. But in the process of education, there is what they call uh, national merits and so on. Now that's now qualification. All of them went to high school and all of them are good students, but there came a time they're going to do some examinations. And there's what they call uh, PSAT, 
SAT, PSAT. And then those who are top notch like this, they say you are now in the what called national meritorious scholars. They are qualifying for something. They were all our US citizens, or they are well born, they were all going to high school. Then after a while they went through an SAT and they said, well, you are in this percentile, you actually qualify for national merit, you know, they call it finalists, they're going to get scholarship. So you can see the same, those are, now if they, those who get those scholarships, they are privileged few out of the myriads that are in the high schools in the college, in the country. So this is what the Lord is trying to make you to see. If a man, it's not a generally giving promise, it's not everybody. He said, if a man keep my saying, he shall never see death. Well, the general one is in John chapter 6. He has given to everybody in John chapter 6. That's why I'm trying to go slowly here. Because many people scratch their head when we preach this. They say, well, Brother Julio, are you saying Peter, James, John, Apostle Paul? You are saying they did not keep his saying? And they were all dead physically? Jesus Christ gave a general promise, but he said, if a man keep my say, keep my sin, he was going to decide. Who is going to decide if he is keep his sin? Tell me, who is going to decide? Jesus, amen. Who is going to decide whether you are keeping his sin? Jesus. But he said, he gave a general promise to everybody that is general for everybody. That if it's the Lord that's going to decide, then it has to be by his own choice, by his own election by his own predestination, and whatever it is, he's going to decide. But this is the general promise to everybody, John chapter 6. Here he was telling the people that anyone that believes in him, he will raise them up at the last day. John chapter 6. Give me John chapter 6, and let's read some few verses here for us. 40 something, let's see. Give me John chapter 6, verse. Let's start from verse 35. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth in me shall never thirst. Give me verse 44. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. That's almost like everybody. Don't you just like that's everybody that comes to him. I will raise him up at the last day. That's the resurrection of the just, of the, of the believers. And he, re he repeated that over and over in this chapter, almost three, four times, that I will raise him up at the last day. I will raise him up. Anyone that believes in the Lord, that is a general promise. But now in John chapter 5, I see why I say, if a man, individual now, keep my sin, he shall never see it. So that is the point I'm trying to make it to foresee that this is not a general promise, it is an individual. Take for example, we know the story of Elijah the prophet, not so. Elijah the prophet. According to the story in 2 Kings chapter 1, he was taken out of this planet without seeing physical death. Not so. But Elisha, the prophet that followed after him, was following him when he was to be taken up. And you can think of Elisha was saying, well, if I can just get double portion of what this man got, everything will be possible. So uh, at the point, Elijah told him, ask whatever you want before I'm taken away from you. He said, well, I pray you let the double portion of your anointing come upon me. Elijah said, well, that's tough. He said, well, if you see me when I'm going, when I'm taking away, then it will be so with you. And we know he saw him going up, so we know he got this double portion. So it's not by anointing. That's what I'm trying to say. Why didn't Elisha now also go away in, the, in, in that translation? It's not by anointing. It is by election. That's what I'm trying to put. So when this man has a more anointing than this guy, he might, but he didn't go away in the translation. He died. Elijah, the prophet died. But Elijah that was taken up, it was by God's 
plan and predestination. So that is what I want to first point out that when the Bible said Christ has given us that, he, that promise, if a man keep my sins and never see that it is the Lord that decides who is keeping his sin, who is, who is whom he is giving that to, but he has given the general promise to everyone that will come unto him. Praise the Lord. Now you can say, well, what can I do to get that privilege? What can I do? He has given it to you. If a man keep my sin, then you then talk to him, Lord, let me be able to keep your sin. Then let me know the sins. Be, give me to the level that I can be keeping your sins. And say, you will be never see it. So that is the first thing. And you can see, yeah, I mentioned it again in John chapter 11. When the Lord Jesus Christ came to raise up Lazarus, John chapter 11, verse 25, you will see the, the, the discussion between the Lord and Martha, the sister of Lazarus. And Martha said, well, if you had been here, my brother would not have died because they believe in healing. They believe that Jesus Christ can heal, and Jesus Christ has been healing the people before that time. Maybe they have heard that he raised the dead, but they were not sure that this boy was going to be raised that same day. They didn't know about that. But he said, I know even now, whatever you will ask God, he will give it to you. They have that confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. They say, your brother will rise up again. I know about that also. I know about the resurrection of the last day because this was for the They already taught them that. And now Jesus Christ wanted to point to him who he really is. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. What does that really mean? He said, the resurrection we are all waiting for at the end that he was promising to everybody. He said, he is that resurrection that is going to make it happen. The Lord Jesus Christ is the one that is going to make it happen. Then he said, and the life, two things. He, can you turn off that please? I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Now, that is the resurrection part. If you believe, he said, though you are dead physically, you shall live because he's going to raise them. He has already said in chapter 6 that I will raise them up at the last day. I will raise them up at the last day. But he didn't stop there. If he stopped right there in verse 25, where he was just confirming what Martha said, because Martha believed that. It's going to happen in the end because the Pharisees were already teaching that. But Jesus Christ came to tell them more. And by this time, he's telling them this is individual now. Verse 26. And whosoever, now look at that, whosoever is bringing to any individual person. Whosoever liveth and believe in me shall never die. But that's, that clause is the last part that people are missing. Believers thou this. Believe it that is. That is the question. It is now individual. Do you believe that? And you can see matter where couldn't swallow is where well, I believe you are the Messiah. Well, that's good. That's exactly what the woman said. Chapter verse 26, verse 27. She said unto him, Yeah, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ. That's the, that's like saying. This is how much we believe in our denomination. That the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. Well, that was a profession of their faith. The Christ is saying, believe it thou this, the last thing he just said. And if you believe and you live, you shall never die. Well, they never had that before. So he said, I believe you are the Christ, the Son of God that shall come. So that is more to make you to see that the Lord came when he was pointing that one, I was saying, he can keep anybody alive that we believe that we keep his saying God knows this thing, believing is one thing keeping his sayings is the other thing so what is the saying we are talking about I've been on the radio preaching one of some of these things about the sayings of the Lord Jesus Christ this that has been written is called the written word of God written word of God we must be can you must first keep those sayings of the Lord, keep those sayings that are written down for us, the life that we are to live. But now, when you are doing this, when you are doing this, then you are a candidate, candidate for the spoken word. 
where now he comes to you and he guides you and he leads you and he speaks speak to you and directs your life and directs your path, keeping his sin. So when there is pandemic in the land, the, the, the great physician will come to you and say, you do this. And then you will be escaping that pandemic. There is trouble in the land. The great physician will tell you that you do this. That is his saying that you must keep. And it has to be you working with him. But that's what the Bible meant. When he told us in the book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 5, where he said, Enoch walked with God. Walking means you are toe to toe with somebody talking and he's talking back to you. Enoch walked with God. And then he was not for God took him. That is, you have to walk with this Jesus who is the Lord. And he's going to be telling you what to do as you pass on the way. That is what the Lord is saying when he says, If a man keep my saying, but you first must be following these sayings, then you are a candidate for the other spoken word of God. Let me go now and talk to you about some of the ways you will get into the, into the veil. Second Peter chapter 1, the Lord just wants to go straight to that. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4 to 11. I say, keep his saying is what he is going to use to make you get, in, get that immortality before the end. If you are going to get that immortality, you see, God he say, he, 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 only, he only has immortality. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. But he said he is able to keep you and me in her life if you will believe it, if you will keep his saying. It is not a general promise. I'm trying to make it clear that. It is an, a privilege few. Someone say, well, I don't think I want to waste my time trying to pursue that. They say, as we pursue him, what did the Lord say? You shall find me when you do what? When you search for me with all of your heart. So then shall you find him. See, when you are pursuing him, even if you say, well, gee, somebody say, well, I don't think I, don't think I want to pursue that. That's which way I, I would rather, many people, when they got this message, they are already old and uh, their body is already going to the grave by old age. This won't make any sense to them. They want to go home. So this won't make any sense to them. That's why Christ was not preaching it to everybody. But it's the general, it's a promise he has given to every, just like salvation. He said, whosoever will, whosoever will, whosoever will. Those who are already getting old in age, they don't want to hear they say they'd rather go because anybody dies on this planet unless it's accident and all that if you are a saint of God you have a say you have a say in when you want to leave this planet because it's not God that is killing us it is not the Lord that is taking anybody it's a bad war when people say oh the Lord took that person away, no the Lord didn't take anybody away the Lord did not take anybody away it is Satan that is causing every physical death. That's why the Bible said the last enemy that shall be destroyed, if he is not enemy, God, God, God won't call it an enemy. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. That's the physical death. Because oh, well, he's talking about physical death. Oh, he's talking about spiritual death. Oh, he's talking about physical death. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 25, 26. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So if it's the enemy, so it's not God that is sending the enemy against us. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. So what I'm trying to say is that any believer that walk with the Lord and you please the Lord, he, he promised, even the Jews, he promised them that they will live their life, they will live their days with long life, will I satisfy you and do what? And show you my salvation. That is a promise for even the Old Testament believers. That's the promise for the Old Testament believers. So everyone that are following the Lord is you have to you you are you are expected to live the length of your days, and then and you say what the length of my days is seventy years. So I was talking to a brother one time. He said, "Now, brother, he said he's already seventy years, so he's ready to go now." I said, "What do you mean? Where you want to go?" He said, "If the Lord wants," I said, "Are you talking of rapture? Are you talking of he wanted to die?" I said, "Why? The Lord didn't say he's seventy. It is David that was lamenting in the book of Psalms. People now think, oh, God has given us 
the last thing the Bible said is Genesis chapter 6, where God said to Moses or to Noah, Moses wrote it down, that I will give them 120 years. That was what the last thing. When you get to the book of Psalms, and you, so that, go and look at that Psalm, Psalm, David was more or less lamenting that the, day, the number of our days is 70, three score years and 10. If by reason of strength, maybe 80, he said, then it's labor and sorrow. They were lamenting because things have gone so bad in their generation. So any, many people now think, oh, it's 70, 80, where you have fulfilled your days up to now, no one. Moses wrote down 120 years. That's why Moses, at the end of 120 years, he left. And many of those generations. But see, what the Lord says is not the Lord that is taking anybody. You have to say you want to go. There was a minister that had an accident many years ago in this country. And in that accident, maybe he was really fed or he wanted to go. His son came and told him, Dad, Speak the word because this is a man of faith. That brother refused to speak the word. But he wanted to go. And then he left. He went. That was what is happening in many places. Many people, after they have grown old, they wanted to go depart and be with the Lord, which is also good. Nothing wrong with it. But this privilege that we are talking about is a privilege. And if you pursue after him, he will show you what you can do. Because he said, you are going to pursue. He said, if you search for me with all of your heart, then shall you find me. So that's put that one aside. Praise the Lord. Now I'm going to go to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Because we said, listening to him, hearing him, and talking to the Lord. And here is what Peter wrote down for us. Verse 3. Let me start from verse 3. According to as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by this ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Like I said, you are going to hear him. You are going to walk with the Lord as you are walking with the Lord. But who and who is he calling? I see the first step is escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. That is the first thing. And that is what it means we are born again. Escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. But that's not over yet. This is what Apostle Paul continued to say. Verse 5, and besides this, besides this, that you have escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss, you have to add this to your faith. And besides this, giving all diligence, that is, diligently do this, diligently do this, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge. Remember, knowledge. Very essential because when you go back and back again, you see it is the knowledge of the Son of God. Remember, I'm trying to underscore, underline that knowledge. I'm going to come back to it because he said, You are to your faith, virtue, and to virtue, knowledge. And to knowledge, temperance. And to temperance, patience. And to patience, godliness. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity or love. Praise the Lord. Well, we will continue this message in the next broadcast. The Bible said, Precept shall be upon precept, line upon line. A little there, a little there. And I pray that you will not miss the next broadcast so that you can build upon that which you have just learned today. The Bible said, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
in another words, we can say faith coming by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing the word of God. It's not just a one-time shot. You must keep hearing the word so that your faith can be built up. We shall continue this message in the next broadcast. Don't miss the next broadcast. God bless you.